So when these, uh, looking at the operations within China and, and everything, all the knowledge and expertise, the technology that's been developed in operating those mines, how much of a transfer does that, you know, we're, I want to talk about the Philippines project in a moment. How much does that expertise then transfer over to places like Bolivia, the Philippines, and, and other investments you make in, in, around the world, essentially. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bolivia is a different environment, for sure, than uh, than China. But touching on one topic, again, water, which we, we just chatted about in, in China, uh, the needs in Bolivia are different. Um, Bolivia does have a rainy season, mm -hmm. uh, but that water runs away uh, and is gone uh, for most of the year. Uh, the mining operation will need water. So the, the plan in construction is to build a retention dam and collect rainwater. Uh, that will meet the mine's needs, but there will probably be, uh, well, there will be uh, excess water available mm. that can be shared with the community. Right. And part of the, the, um, the legacy items after the closure of the mine will basically be able to, you know, gift and give this dam mm. to the community to have as an ongoing source of water. So different situation, um, uh, a different answer. But again, thinking about what are the things that you can build that are cooperative and are useful. Uh, you mentioned the Philippines. Uh, the the mine that's contemplated there is uh, an underground uh, copper gold mine producing concentrates. Oh, it's an underground one. Uh, it would be I didn't an underground know that. mine. And uh, we see direct analogs with our GC mine that we're operating in China. And in fact, the, uh, the management team at uh, Celsius, uh, the company, the Australian company that we are uh, looking to acquire, uh, they visited the GC mine mm. and were uh, very impressed with how the mining operations were run, uh, how the mill was run, uh, the fact that uh, the tailings are being done in a dry stack tailings facility, the underground uh, paste backfill that I mentioned. So when they're looking at thinking of how the mine would be built mm -hmm. in the Philippines, they can point to a direct comparison that we've run, uh, that we've built and are running um, in full compliance in China. So, uh, where, where is that? Well, the Philippines project, what, what stage is that at? Is that... A uh, well, it uh, they've uh, they've done two resource estimates, and in between those, they did uh, effectively like a PEA or a scoping study. Yeah, and then and where is and your investment? You own well. What we've announced is um, the intention, and that was a non-binding term sheet um, to acquire the company. Uh, total acquisition cost is around fifty-six million Australian, and at the time of the announcement, we also did a, a funding. Uh, just to bridge them through to the end of the acquisition. Right. And so we're looking to uh, finalize and get a definitive agreement signed here shortly and then move ahead to uh, uh, the shareholder meeting, et cetera, to, to close the transaction. Uh, but we're working in cooperation with them looking at the game mm. plan for funding, for what are the next steps that need to get done. And um, uh, what they've done a great job of is advancing this project uh, technically, um, w working it through the Philippine permitting environment, mm -hmm. but then also establishing good relationships, again, with the local community yeah. uh, who are uh, who are on side with um, uh, with the development plans for the mine. And where is that? Where is the where would the mine be located? Well, it's in um, it's in the northern part of Luzon Island, so okay. um, northwest of Manila.